can see, this is day three of Trevor being unable to speak. The doctor ordered him to rest his vocal cords, so congratulations, society, you silenced another black man. <laughs> But he is still sitting here using a talking app on his phone. Say something, Trevor. For quality assurance purposes, this show may be recorded. Very nice. Now let's catch up on today's headlines. For a few months now, the US and China have been in a trade war, which, let's be honest, it's the most boring kind of war there is. Until now. All right, breaking news. A new rift potentially between the United States and China after an executive for a Chinese tech giant, Huawei, was arrested in Canada. Meng Wanzhou is her name. She's the daughter of Huawei's founder. She may be sent to the U.S. to face reported charges of trying to evade U.S. sanctions on Iran. Chinese officials are calling on Canada to release her. Did you get that? The U.S. and Canada just arrested the daughter of one of China's most powerful families. They are going full Game of Thrones on this trade war. I mean, how do you think President Trump would like it if China threw one of his kids into prison? Depends which kid. Oh, yeah, no, good point. That's a good point. Also, if you have to get arrested, try to do it in Canada. They don't even do good cop, bad cop. It's just good cop, even nicer cop. <laughs> Moving on, breaking news from President Trump's New Jersey Golf Club, where he, we just found out that his housekeeper is an illegal immigrant. <laughs> so, I guess Trump told us he'd build a wall, but he never said there'd be a service entrance. <laughs> Victorina Morales says that her job included making Trump's bed, cleaning his toilet, and ironing his boxer shorts. Good God. Talk about jobs Americans don't want to do. Yeah. And Trump now says that because a housekeeper doesn't have legal papers, she'll be terminated, which I gotta tell you, I'm really surprised about. Usually if you're a woman in Trump's bedroom, the only document you need is an NDA. <laughs> Finally, some news from the world of entertainment. A big announcement from Justin Timberlake. The singer says he's postponing his remaining concert dates for December. He told Instagram followers that his doctors want him to continue to rest his voice. He's been pushing back shows since October for bruised vocal cords. Oh, man. God, that is so sad. Justin Timberlake with no voice? Well, I mean, you know what that means. He's useless to society now. Because, you know, when you're an entertainer and you can't entertain, what good are you for? Um, does he? Yeah, I mean, the only thing left to do is just take him out back and um, turn him into does blue. He? <laughs> does he? Mm -hmm. I have the same problem with my vocal cords. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so weird. You guys uh, attend the same orgies or something? Sometimes, but not this time. Oh, good to know. Let's move on to our top story. <laughs> Good, isn't it? Yeah. Money. When it started, it was seashells and beads and stuff, which was fine when we were scamming the Indians, but now we have a real economy. Anyway, we've since moved on to coins and paper money, but now even that seems out of date. We've all heard the saying that cash is king, but more and more stores are going cashless. So that means leave your cash at home and you got to bring your credit card. Chain restaurants like Tender Greens, airlines like United and Delta don't take cash on flights anymore. Even fitness studios like Bar Method only take plastic. Safety is a big reason. Restaurants say they're going cash free. No cash means nothing for thieves to run off with. That's right, no more cash means no more robberies until the bad guys start mugging your Venmo. Look out, he's got a knife emoji. <laughs> and while cashless seems like the wave of the future, there are some downsides that you may not have thought of. The experts warn about the people who may be left behind, so-called unbanked consumers. A 2015 federal survey found that 7% of American households had no checking or savings accounts. It's more than twice as high for African Americans and Latinos. Businesses accepting only credit or debit disproportionately deny service to this city's most vulnerable people. What happens if you're homeless? What happens if you're undocumented? What happens if you're too poor to have credit? What happens if you're underbanked? That's right, going cashless can discriminate against people who can only pay in cash. Not to mention how unfair it is on the people on the cash. You know, just when Harriet Tubman's gonna get on the 20, all of a sudden we're not taking it anymore? She's gonna be like, bitch, I just got here. For more on the 
move towards cashless, we're joined by our senior junior correspondent, Jabuki Young White. Oh, oh my God. Uh, thank you, Desi. Thank you, Desi. Thank you, Dimple Alexa. I really appreciate it. <laughs> So Jabuki, how do you feel about, uh, sorry, uh, so Jabuki, how do young people feel about the end of cash? Oh, this is amazing. I mean, cash is trash. <laughs> it's bulky, it's easy to lose, and it's literally gross. Like, think about it, people are passing it around with their germy hands, then they snort coke with it, <laughs> and then they stick it in a G-string, <laughs> and then the last thing you touch before you eat a slice of pizza is that cash. <laughs> People are happy when they find money in the ground, but that shit was on the ground, you know? Like, sure, you found 20, but now you gotta spend 400 on antibiotics. <laughs> Cash is basically chlamydia that you use to buy Snickers, essentially. But Jabuki, don't young people care about all the downsides? Oh, don't waste your battery, I'm gonna get to that. Uh... <laughs> As a millennial, I'm all about the end of cash, you know? But then on the other hand, I'm a millennial, which means I care about things like social justice and plastic straws and shit. <laughs> and there's a lot of marginalized people that can't get a credit card or a fancy phone or even a bank account. So it's like a subtle form of discrimination. Like when the sign outside the club says, no baggy pants or no good dancers, like, we know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> You know, going cashless, speaking of good dancers, going cashless is going to make strip clubs like hella boring, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like you can't pay a stripper with like Apple Pay, you know? <laughs> Just like one dollar cent, one dollar cent, one dollar cent, like. is young people created this cashless world and now they don't want to live in it? Well, yeah, but we could also solve it. I mean, if there's one thing that young people like, it's bringing back old shit. <laughs> Vinyls, beards, Jeff Goldblum, that was us. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to get ahead of the curve and make some artisanal cash at home in my bathroom. <laughs> it looks authentic, right? I'm selling it on Etsy if you want to get in on it, Desi. Dude, making counterfeit money is a felony. Okay, okay, calm down, Robocop. <laughs> Let's just keep this between us and Benjamin Jefferson. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna take this. Shibuki Young White, everybody!